Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Morning Musings is Changes in Healing, the Ripple Effect. I'm doing a series of Morning Musings, and I'm using posts from my blog, Adventures in Density and Effort, as inspiration. Now, I wrote these a while back, and the world has completely transformed since then. So if I encounter anything that is out of date, I will interrupt myself and give you the most recent information. At the end, if necessary, I will summarize the topic based on what's going on in the world today. Also, I have some special offers, so stay tuned to the very end to see what they are. Changes in healing, the ripple effect. There are changes happening in the way we heal others. The old ways aren't working, if they ever did. The energy now is so vibrant and clear that any denser pattern of the past is going to seem more discordant or stuck right now. One old way of healing oneself was to rescue, either to save people from themselves themselves or to help them see the light or provide them something they need. It was often very conditional. We'll help you in the way we feel you need help. We'll move you to the nursing home we picked out for you. We'll stand by you if you have the operation we think you need. We'll give you money if you spend it on what we think you should spend it on. Entangled threads. Very invalidating. Everyone is a capable being who's written their individual storyline situation because they're infinitely powerful. The more challenging the part, the more capable they are. It's like an actor going for an Oscar-winning role. When you swoop in to rescue, or even if you heap advice on them, you're invalidating their creativity. The obvious or overt way is to help them help themselves, and that is happening the world over. Examples are offering microloans to women in Pakistan so they can be the cell phone lady for their village, which previously had no phone service, or corporations outsourcing their services to India providing jobs and flooding the country with income rather than aid. Change is happening on an energetic level as well. An old way of healing others is to pray for their souls or send healing energy to them in a conditional way for them to get better or improve the way the healer thinks they should. Another level is to simply shine light on them, which gives them the opportunity to raise their vibration and they'll always be at choice to accept the light. There's also communicating to the person as spirit, not verbally to the body personality, which validates them as an expanded being beyond the limitations they've created in their lives. The more subtle way to heal others, and the more challenging to the healer, is to focus on yourself. In raising your own vibration, you create a ripple effect throughout your hologram. You give permission to others to create changes in their life. If you can be happy and you have the same similar family background, so can they. Imagine a dysfunctional pattern looking like a row of dominoes balancing on end. If you, as an individual domino, step out of the row, it changes the whole pattern. I'm going to stop myself there because one of the first things I think about is in an abusive family, often it's one person who's being abused and the other person doesn't realize it and they're being raised totally differently. So even though they're siblings in the same house, they're having completely different realities. So if you're not the person who's been abused and you're making changes and why can't they, they might have chosen the more Oscar worthy role. However, there is a thing that dysfunctional family patterns, we all have our specific roles. And if we step out, it does change the entire dynamic and it does give permission to other people to make changes. So I have kind of mixed feelings about that. But when I realize that we're all infinite beings and the more capable of us create the more challenging lifetimes, then I can also look at with compassion those family members that have had the more devastating childhood. And I could use some of this to help assist with their changes. I can talk to them as consciousness. I can do some other energetic things. Let's see if I talk about it here. Back to the blog. You don't necessarily need to make a geographic change to do this. You can withdraw your focus from the group and turn inward to yourself. Make choices and take actions based on what would make your heart sing, a clear indication that you're moving in the direction of source. Shine light on your own life. Go in the direction of what feels clearest or brightest to you. When you do this, it releases your stuck entanglements with others. It also releases energy from their space as well. It frees them up to change or not. It doesn't mean that you completely ignore them. There are certain relationships and interactions where it's appropriate to help or assist. But in shifting your focus, you'll find a renewed vitality for helping others when it's appropriate. You can give from a clear heart and not a space of obligation. It also opens up infinite possibilities and solutions. So I'm going to stop there because the other thing that's running through my head is that I've spent the last six years helping my little brother who's six 
60 this year since he's had a stroke. And one of the things I'm very aware of is all these family patterns that we have. My father was our emotional abuser. He's also a former officer of the CIA. So he had used a lot of programming techniques on us. And he basically set things up so that we were all separated from each other so we couldn't compare notes. And my youngest brother, I feel like, got the worst of it all. He was an introvert anyway. And my father expected us all to shape up and be very verbally acute. So one of the things that I notice is what's going on for him and what's affecting his healing is all this childhood abuse. And I do feel like my presence there is providing support and changing some family pattern. And it's also been interesting for me because even as in one level, it feels like a huge limitation been going on for such a long time. Doors keep opening for me and new experiences keep happening. So the experience of going back and forth to New York from Seattle every month, including throughout the pandemic, has really opened up other possibilities for me as well. So, oh, look at the next paragraph here. It also opens up infinite possibilities and solutions. Maybe you aren't the only one who can take care of someone or something. Maybe there are other ways that they can get accomplished. Suddenly, people who seemed so dependent are able to do things for themselves. I have actually noticed that my brother's wife got breast cancer and in the first two years of continuous chemo, he started to be able to do things that he never was able to do before. He's able to shower himself. He's able to cook meals. So he has become more independent. It's occurring to me that this also means that there are other possibilities where I can still care manage both their health situations without physically having to be there every month. We'll see what I'm creating as consciousness. Back to the blog. This week, focus on yourself and your own inner light. Take time whenever it occurs to you to do whatever helps you ground and center. Withdraw your focus on others, their drama, or story. Respond when you feel motivated to respond. Otherwise, pay attention to your own life and what will enlighten you. You may notice some others fading away when this happens, and some may have tantrums when you step out of the pattern. Keep the focus on yourself for this week and see what happens. And leave me a comment below. I love to read your comments. So I feel like this is also very close to another article that I'd written which is the 100th monkey effect. And I'm pretty certain there's an earlier video that I made of this a couple months ago. You'll find it in the playlist. And I feel like that's what's going on on the planet today is that we're all creating a ripple effect of healing and change. And it's collectively helping us shift to this new awareness of consciousness, enabling us to change and evolve in ways faster than ever has been possible before. So if you like these videos, please click the like button and also click the bell icon to subscribe. That way you tell YouTube to share this with more people and get this out to folks that really need this information. If you'd like a free sample of one of my consciousness techniques, down below is the skybox technique. It'll give you an expanded perspective of your life and actually help you make some changes as well. If you want some tools for manifestation, I have a self-study course called Manifesting Money in Miracles. It teaches you how to shift vibrations inside yourself, which can completely transform your external reality. And if you want to know how to do this for yourself, go to my website, joan-nukem.com. I do individual sessions where I take a look at the essence of who you are and what's going on in your life today. And I can answer any questions that you have. I can take a look at relationships. I can take a look at the future. I can take a look at money. I can take a look at if you're going to move or buy a house. And if you have a deceased loved one. I also talk to dead people and all of this is recorded just for you. And if you want to know how to do this for yourself, Manifesting Money and Miracles is a good preparation for my coaching special where I work with you one-on-one -on -one and I give you specifically curated techniques so that you can transform your life. And it's at my website, joan-newcomb.com, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Morning Musings.